So we're all used to the term fake news. We've seen it used by President of the United States. We see our friends on Facebook commenting fake news when they don't like the post that we've shared. But it actually has quite a specific origin story. And that's where people created fake news websites, which actually were made to look like real news websites. And then they would then write quite scandalous, sensational stories on these websites. They would, because they're so shocking, get an enormous amount of traffic to the website. They'd have ads on the website. This would drive quite a lot of ad revenue and they could make quite good money. So when we talk about fake news and fake news websites, we're talking about websites which create false stories to try and attract a lot of people to those websites. So the first step is to actually just pause. We're quite primed in the modern era with Twitter, with Facebook, with WhatsApp to constantly be receiving and sharing information. So the first thing you can do when you get something like this is to actually just not do anything because that helps break the cycle um, of this information just constantly being shared and passed on. So take a moment have a look at what you're reading, and then check if it incites a response or a feeling in you. Does it make you scared? Does it make you worry? Does it make you angry? Because real stories and accurate information can make you feel these ways, but fake news stories are primed and designed to shock you, to upset you, so that you then do respond and react. And the reason that lots of people share these stories is because they actually want to do good a lot of people who share misinformation and fake news stories, they're not trying to mislead people. They're not trying to trick their friends or family. They see something that upsets them, and maybe it's a warning or it's a scary story, and they want to pass it on. Most people sharing this information aren't doing it with malice. They aren't trying to mislead. They're actually thinking they're helping, but they're inadvertently helping spread and share information that isn't helpful and can actually be harmful in some cases. So the other thing you can do is quite a simple thing, and that is to, when you're on legitimate news websites, is to start paying attention to what they look like. So for example, if you go onto News24 or the Mail Guardian, you'll see how a, a newspaper or online news website generally presents things, how they have an about section, and when you click on the about section, you can see who the newspaper is and who it's owned by, and you can see the journalists' names listed next to their story. Often with fake news websites, they don't have an easy to find about section, or if they do, it seems a bit dubious. Likewise, often these stories don't have the names of journalists attached to them. Another thing to check is sometimes overlooked is that some of these websites actually admit that they're not real news websites. So have a look, make sure that there isn't a tag or a hashtag which marks the story as satire. That's a, a dead giveaway that the story isn't real and that it's being produced for entertainment purposes. So you can look for that sometimes under the headline or by the name of the journalist or otherwise look around the website for a tagline or some sort of disclaimer that the stories on the website aren't real. Once you've checked who owns the website, if it's satire, how it makes you feel, the next easiest step is really just to hop onto Google. If a story is as shocking and scandalous as it sounds, then it's probably going to be reported on somewhere else. So hop onto Google, put the keywords into the story. So for example, a couple of years ago during the Oscar Pistorius trial, there was a fake news website that said that the judge in the case, the car had been petrol bombed and that she had died. And this story went quite viral. But if you actually went to Google and you Googled the judge's name and car and petrol bomb, you saw that no one was actually reporting. In our era of breaking news, we know that sometimes things can be, news can be broken on Twitter and that there might just be one person saying that something's happening and it may turn out to be true. But if you're only seeing one news site reporting on it and no one else is at least looking into it or investigating it, then that's a good sign that there could be a problem with the story. There are a couple of online tools that make fact-checking for everyone a lot easier. So the first one I would really recommend using and getting acquainted with is Google Reverse Image Search. 
A lot of the misinformation that we see is actually surrounded around images. And we see this in a couple of ways. The first is when an image has been photoshopped. So this is where you have an image and someone has altered it, tweaked it, messed with something in the picture to suggest something that didn't actually happen. So an example of this was when a picture was quite widely shared that showed former President Jacob Zuma supposedly dancing with Babes Wadumo. And that would help you find similar pictures. Another great tool is actually called Tinai. And what that does is that it finds the original of the picture that has been altered. And quite interestingly then, it allows you to compare the two. If you are unsure about a fact or a figure or a number being shared by a politician or someone in power, the easiest thing to do is actually just to ask questions. If you can find them on Twitter, you can tweet them, maybe on their own Facebook and you can send them a direct message. And you have the right to ask people to substantiate what they're saying. If they can't provide the evidence to you, if they can't say where their numbers are from, then that's usually a red flag that there could be a problem with what they're saying.